The Rights to Ricky Sanchez podcast is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download their top-rated app and use promo code RTRS and brought to you by SeatGeek. Get 20%, nope, not 20%, but $20 off your first purchase. $20 off your first purchase with promo code RTRS. Uh, Big Barker Therapeutic Dog Beds. Get yours at bigbarker.com slash Ricky and Stateside Urban Craft Vodka, the sponsor of the Corner 3 newsletter. Go to statesidevodka.com. On the show today, another year, another draft. Not really as crazy as anyone had had planned or hoped or anything, but the Sixers come out of it just with three picks and drafting three different players. So we'll talk about those players, whether they're going to be on the Sixers or not. As well, Russell Westbrook gets traded to the Lakers. Maybe that changes, changes the Brad Beal calculus. Uh, and then a bunch of Ben Simmons trades, proposals, that seem a little crazy from Daryl Morey. Uh, before we get started, I mentioned Stateside Vodka is one of our sponsors. The Stateside Vodka sodas sold out uh, because they were so popular, which is amazing. So I am told they will be back on the website within one week. So you'll be able to get the party pack of Stateside Vodka sodas within one week. Remember, they are gluten-free, no added sugars, no artificial flavors, no artificial sugars, nothing like that. But while you're waiting, you could just get some of that regular stateside vodka. Go to statesidevodka.com. Your first purchase always gets a free rocks glass. Must be 21. Uh, without any further ado, Amos and the chef. Larry, sweetie, the man is here. <laughs> We will write y'all. We will write. We will write. Even when it went wrong, we will write. We will write. We was right, y'all. We will write. So say the name. 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 Welcome to the Right to Ricky Sanchez podcast. I'm Spike Eskin, along with the Philip Pietrusev of the Rights to Ricky Sanchez. That is Mike Levin. Good evening. Right before this podcast started, you said, I don't anticipate this being a long one. And I don't know why you have to learn a lesson every year, but you're wrong. We're doing six hours on Charles Bassey and Philip Pietrusev. It's very well, exciting. Maybe you are. Me. Maybe you, you are. Take a nap. You can nap on screen. I, I wake okay. up to do this podcast at seven in the morning sometimes, and I'm sleeping on, during the pod. So you can just li lie down. You got a bed right there. So Not nice. Not exactly the same lay, thing. Lay right Not down. Exactly. Just rest your head. I got it covered. We got me. CJ will pop in if I need to take a water break. We are good. Very exciting. Very exciting night. Love the draft. Uh, and they after you know buying the 53rd pick for $2 million, which first of all, very nice to see. Very nice that they're spending all the money that their owners have uh, and buying multi tens of millions of dollars in a Miami mansion. It's nice that they're spending money on a pick. I think that's good. Uh, I kind of wonder why they do that. I, I wonder if it's because they could, it's another maybe unguaranteed contract. They could I, like, I, I don't understand the purpose of buy, them buying the pick. There must be something behind that. It can't just be, we love the back end of this draft. There has no, to be I, something else. I, I think it was, let's set the, market for uh how much it's going to cost to buy into this draft so that somebody at whatever somebody don't, doesn't think that they can go get the guy that they want for like 2.5 million at like 32 or something like that and so mm -hmm. if they wanted it they would have to then deal with the sixers at 28 if they were going to make that trade that would my mm -hmm. guess is that they didn't if they wanted to like rule that out so people would have to come like up their offer to them as far as like prospects or players go or anything um, no other picks got bought. It was just that one right. earlier today. So I thought that was interesting. Right. Um, but Daryl stays put, stays put and makes those three picks. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any other, we're still recording this as the draft is currently going a couple more picks left, but it looks like that they're going to keep it. And it's a, it's an exciting, it's an exciting time. It's an exciting night. 
I'm back. We're back. I'm smiling again. We have some version of the penguin right here next to us. No, um, it doesn't look like a penguin. You got to be working. No, it why. just looks like a person. No, it <laughs> looks, like, looks like fucking you. But so it's good. The, the Sixers take. So we'll go through the, the players the Sixers take took, and then I, I want to ask you about the top of the draft a little bit, then then to Westbrook and the Simmons stuff. So the Sixers take Jaden Springer at 28 from Tennessee, who is like one of the youngest players in the draft, right? 18 yep. years old, which yeah, yeah. he turns 19 in a few months. Yeah. So, so I like, I, I guess I don't even want to really get into whether he'll be on the team or not. Uh, we've been burned in years before by players that were both on our big boards that we both liked that didn't end up on the Sixers. And of course the Sixers have moves to make, but uh, tell us about Springer. Yeah. I had him uh, number eight on my board. Um, he's awesome. He is, a, he's, as you said, one of the youngest guys in the draft class, he's six, four, he is a, a true combo guard. Um, his big calling card is defense, but that doesn't mean his offense is nothing. He really has, has like good, he, he really profiles as a nice three and D guard. I, I think of him like, a like George Hill, if George Hill had like a lot more ball skills, um, and was alive. Has, was and was alive, yeah. I, I mean, like other comps. I was just thinking about comps for him as the course of the draft because I was I was really hoping that they would that he would fall to them and they would get him. Um, like a modern Andre Miller, I think is an interesting way to think of him. Um, there's some Drew Holiday to his game for sure, uh, but he's super young. He's got a lot of room to develop. He's he shot well from three at uh, at Tennessee, but on very few attempts. It wasn't. Um, wasn't because he was he's not like known as a shooter but i think he's a good catch and shoot player he has to work on his uh shooting off the dribble um but tennessee was just a really bad shooting team this year they didn't they finished they had very few like legit you know scary shooters for the defense to run out on and they were one of the worst shooting teams in the sec well into like 200s in the nation both in percentage and volume um and uh and so it wasn't like he could uh, he had a lot of open looks because they just weren't worried about any other guys uh from the outside. So the thing that excites me most about Springer, obviously the defense, he's, he's really thick. Um, I, I've meant, I think I mentioned in the, in the uh, draft preview podcast that he had like a Kyle Lowry ass type of thing, um, which is very exciting for me. He's very physical. He doesn't get bumped off his spot, either offensively or defensively can stick with guys bigger than him because he's got a low center of gravity. He's really strong. Um, and, Does it ever, uh, ever, ever occur to you how, how, uh, like you're saying that about an 18 year old person, <laughs> a little bit that you've never met. Is, okay. I mean, it's worse. I so I read there was a um, <laughs> there was a uh, a uh, what's his name? Rob Delaney had a a uh, like a little sketch, not even a sketch, just a video where he read baseball scouting reports about like 15 and 16 year olds. It's yeah. really funny, <laughs> um, and it's and it's very odd how they're they're talked about for sure. But like in basketball, like having like a big ass is important and he uses it well. He uses it to create space. He uses it to to get inside and, and bump people off their spot. Um, he's he's an impressive he's an impressive player. And to be that crafty at that age, I think is is a really uh, useful tool. Um, the thing that excites me offensively is his ability to like just get into like nooks and finish in traffic and and sort of slice his way through. I think first of all, I think he really fits nicely with Tyrus Maxey. I think both of those guys, neither. <laughs> okay, of them. good. So in like night twenty twenty seven. No, I think they both. I think they both are in the rotation right now. I think Maxie's probably the starter, and I think Jaden Springer and like Springer and what Seth Curry is. What world are you living in? What Spring world are you living in? What when a, a team that is competing for a title next year is playing an eighteen year old guard in? We'll be, in the we'll be nineteen, but Maxi Maxi played. Maxi was a big part of the rotation. He wasn't a big part of the rotation. He barely played in the the second half of the year, and then and then was in and out in the playoffs. And like like, and they also lost in the second round. Like, there, there's no way this guy's going to be in in the rotation right away. Like, right. It would I think, be a, I think he certainly has the the ability to to get in there because he plays defense. He plays hard. Maxi wasn't a good defender coming in and and improved himself over the course of the season. Um, he was very. I mean, you know how good Maxi was and how valuable he was to the team. I think I think Springer is a different kind of player. But when you draft two guys in the first round and back to back years, and they're both guards, you want to know if they can play together. And I'm saying that I think they can. And uh, as far as like catch and shoot goes, as far as getting into the room, oh, a couple of good guys that I like just got drafted. Um, 
I, he just he's just like an, a very exciting player and an easy guy to root for and easy guy to, he plays hard he's got a high motor um there's there's i saw a comp somebody compared him to dennis johnson for the uh, for the olds who listen to this podcast um i think uh and the other thing that's really exciting about him is that he's like he's so physical that he seeks out contact and he gets fouled he had one of the highest foul uh foul drawing rates of any guard in the country or in the draft class and for him to be that at, at his age and also play defense it's just really exciting it's a really exciting package i think like what what is his ceiling is really exciting but he you know how how much he can get better as a ball handler he's a solid ball handler but not like crazy dynamic with the ball um he's pretty much like a straight line drive and can slash a little bit his nice like little jump stop slicing in between guys um but i'm excited to see what he him play with along alongside other shooters i think him and seth is an interesting backcourt at times um his cousin is deandre bembry which is fun philly philly's own um he's a big favorite of friend of the pod brian schrader who we had on a couple years ago um really really likes him a lot and uh i'm a fan i just think he's really good i think that he was he came in as the i think 12th ranked prospect in the nation and then played for rick barnes at tennessee who is just not a good coach i really don't know why he keeps getting jobs but um but he and and he performed he is just like a really solid two-way guard i think he profiles as just an nba player for a long time and a very useful player, I think probably quicker than his age would indicate. That's I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy about it. So they took two guys in the 50s, 50 and 53, Philippe, Philippe Petrusev and Charles Bassey. We'll talk about that in a second. But before we do, let me ask you a question. Did, maybe the team that you follow, maybe they use one uh, predatory uh, secondary market website to sell their tickets that's super confusing. And then... You know, before the next season, they get rid of the CEO. They use a different, uh, confusing uh, ticket reselling website. Don't you wish ticket buying was easy instead of predatory and confusing? Well, SeatGeek does that. That's right, SeatGeek. It's the best app to buy tickets because it's not confusing. What SeatGeek does is it takes all of the tickets from all of the secondary websites that puts them all in one place and tells you what a good deal is and what a good deal isn't. I mentioned the last time, yes, I got Limp Biscuit tickets for Irving Plaza uh, in New York, but a coworker of mine at, uh, at IP was looking for Harry Styles tickets at the Wells Fargo Center and was super frustrated at trying to find tickets. I told him, download the SeatGeek app. He does. What they do is they rate the deals on a scale of one to 10. And for those of you who don't like numbers or can't count, they also use color codes to show you whether a deal is good. So a red deal is, is overpriced. Yellow deal is eh. Green deal is really good. SeatGeek, 50,000 five-star reviews, over 50,000 on the Apple Pod, uh, the, uh, not the Apple Podcast Store, but the Apple, uh, what's it called? The App Store. 50,000, over 50,000 five star reviews. And we have 20 bucks off for you. So if you are a new user, use code RTRS, $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. Promo code RTRS. If you don't want to download the app, that's okay. Just go to SeatGeek.com. Otherwise, download the app. And again, use promo code RTRS for 20 bucks off. That is SeatGeek, so you don't have to use predatory, secondary selling websites that confuse you, that your own team supports you with, uh, that your own team supports. You can just use SeatGeek. Okay, back to, uh, uh-oh, two-way yep. deal. Yep, see that? very we'll exciting. We'll get to that in a second. Get to that in a second. Okay. All right, at 50, Philippe Petrosev, seven foot, uh, is he a, I was He's looking at him, he doesn't, is he a center though? Is like yeah. a center by name? Okay, um, you know, was a was the Adriatic League MVP last year, I think, or something like that. So you know, he's your stretch five. There you go. He'll be in the rotation too, right? I like him. Stretch is he five, even so coming he, over? Is no, so he, over? as well. We're figuring it out. But Schmitz, Mike Schmitz, reported that he wants to come over now. This was what he was hearing prior to the draft. But then Rich Hoffman uh, had a sourced report saying he's going to be a stashed player. Um, okay. which is good. And I think that's, I think that's solid. Um, Petrosev played at Gonzaga, uh, for two years. He's Serbian and he came over, played high school basketball at Montverde Academy, familiar. Um, and then played two years at Gonzaga, one year, one year as a backup. And then the second year as a starter, led the team in scoring average like 17 and eight, but it was mostly through like 
inside, little hook shots, little moves in, around the rim. This was in 2019, 2020. And then was flirting with going with the draft and just decided to go pro, went to the Adri Adriatic League and played basketball for our old friends at Megalex. You familiar? Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Who was at Megalex? Was it was uh, it Luau. TLC? Luau. Yeah. And I'm, I don't know yeah. other, other guys. Yeah. Dario was also there. Um, and, uh, and then over the course of that year, he drastically improved his outside shooting. Um, he shot 42% from three on three, three attempts per game um, and scored 24 points per game, eight, eight rebounds and, and a couple blocks in here and there. So uh, just seemed to have gotten significantly better uh, as an offensive player and diversifying his game offensively. He is a good rebounder, but defensively is, is lacking. This is why if he was better, he would have gone in the first round. But uh, the defense is where he struggles. Uh, he's pretty slow. You don't want him defending the perimeter. But as a legit stre stretch five guy who's young and has shown the ability to get better, um, and now that if it's especially it's going to be a stash, I think he's just a, a really solid pick at 50 and um, has really nice touch around the rim. And I think if he keeps getting bigger, works on his body, does, does all the, you know, tries to become more useful as a defensive player, he seems to have good instincts as a rebounder, uh, knack for the ball. Um, he's, it's a good pick. And I, and I like uh that they're stashing and when was the Sixers haven't feel like they haven't stashed a guy in a really long time so I'm uh I'm super happy about it yeah I'm trying to think when the last stash was and we still have that that guard right uh who's that guard from 17 years ago the hinky guy Mitch yeah. no he's gone yeah. oh oh is he yeah oh uh, okay what happened why is he gone uh what Good. trade was he in people will are yelling at us knowing right yeah, now. yeah I'm sorry I'm sorry um, Sorry, I'm sorry. It was right. in the Thunder trade. It was in the uh, the Horford trade. Okay. Uh, so at 53, they take Charles Bassey. Who's that? So Charles Bassey is, uh, he played three years at Western Kentucky. He came in actually as the ninth ranked player in his class. Um, so it was a pretty big surprise uh, in 2018 when he decided, he declared for Western Kentucky. He played his high school ball in, in Kentucky. He transferred at some point. Um, but he's originally from Nigeria. Um, he's a big dude. He's very strong, very physical, really similar to a, like a Dan Gafford type who just was just like a screen and roll lob threat. Gafford is a better perimeter defender. Bassie's a little bit slower in that, in that area, but how big is um, his ass. Do you think like, I say I just, I pretty big ass, relatively big ass. <laughs> large ass for a, for a center. He's a really, really good rebounder. He's an excellent shot blocker kind of does the you know is is the outline of a dwight howard at this point in his career type like screen and roll rebound uh doesn't try to do too much the the, the thing that's exciting about charles bassey because he has he does have an nba body and and does all the things you want a big man to do is he also has uh improved his three-point shooting as well like like Petrushev. he shot 31 percent from three on on 59 attempts this year um which is not that many attempts but over three seasons he was a uh, career 77% from the line um, over three years, over like 300 some foul shots. And so that's, if you're looking at that, you're thinking like we can get a minute, we can work with that shot. And, uh, and that's exciting. It's, I don't, I definitely don't mind getting two potential stretch fives and go like somebody, one of these guys is going to turn into something of a, of an NBA player. And I think, I think they both have possibilities and especially with like how weak the Sixers were, from the backup center situation in the playoffs and in the past years, obviously it's just, I, I definitely don't mind going into camp and going like, Hey, somebody take the job. You all have the chance to do it. Let's see whose skills went out. I still think I'd prefer B ball Paul as a, as a prospect over these guys, but I, I like them joining the mix. And if, if Bassie's on a two way or a, or like last spot on the rotation I'm, or in the last spot on the roster, I'm, I'm totally happy with it. Well, if Bassey comes in at 77% free throw, give him to us for a couple of years and we'll get him right down to oh, 52. Yeah. 52, yeah. we can get that down to 52, no problem, for sure. Yeah. So then we just got a note, and this is when all the, after the second round ends, uh, you know, all the uh, the undrafted guys. So the Sixers agreed to a two-way deal with Michigan State's Aaron Henry. Yes. So who's so that? Aaron Henry is a wing. He is 6'6", lefty, prototypical, like, college wing. He was the guy a couple years ago after his freshman during – I think it was during a March Madness game. He was a freshman at the time um, who got, like, visibly screamed at by Tom Izzo. It became, like, a, uh, yeah. a, a somewhat of a sensation where, like, 
people were calling out like coach shouldn't do that and whatever aaron henry came out and said like it's fine we have a good relationship like i don't mind being coached like that whatever it is um he's a good player he th- he was looked at he was a good player on a good michigan state team that was like the cassius winston xavier tillman team and i think people were hoping i was certainly hoping that he would take a leap forward in the sophomore junior season he didn't really do that um he obviously had more of a role but never like vaulted himself into a high status player but is is a really good guy to get on a two-way um has an nba body has a decent looking jump shot shot you know, 33% from three for his career, 73% from the line. I think he's going to be a fine catch and shoot player. I think he absolutely has a chance to to make a roster and, and eventually be a rotation player because he his assist numbers are pretty good. He rebounds a little bit. He blocks a little bit, kind of just does a little bit of everything. He's not excellent in any department, but like he's a basketball player. And uh, and if he works on his jumper and he works on his defense, he plays his ass off. I think he absolutely could, could uh, play some minutes this season and any season Mike- and get better. I love it. My contribution to this is, believe it or not, I work with a guy at WFAN, and his name is Tom Izzo. And That's funny. When they, yeah, <laughs> when my boss sent me an email, he's like, "Hey, connect with our, our video guys, Tom Izzo." Uh, it just yeah, I've never heard anybody else named Tom Izzo. Like, no, it's not I a you imagine not a not a very common name. This is me yeah. uh, thinking about Aaron Henry stuff on the fly, so I'm I'm trying to uh, see anything else if I'm forgetting any other parts of this game, but. He's uh he's 21, which is not super old to have it be like a, a like a potential three and D guy. It's just like these are the chances you take. Like these are the kinds of guy you you want them like taking a swing on. And uh and the Sixers were certainly light on potential like multi positional defenders who could be, have like a big body and stuff. Um, and so if he ends up improving his game and getting better, like that'd be a nice bench piece for the future. So at the top of the draft, and I, I couldn't remember, I, I couldn't remember totally that, you know, the first three picks go pretty chalk with Cunningham Green and then Mobley. I, Barnes, when it happened, it looked like a surprise. Was it a surprise that he went for? I, I couldn't remember Scotty what Barnes? we talked about. Yeah. De- definite surprise. Um, okay. He, it was very projected to be Jalen Suggs. It was a Scotty Barnes coming up as high as he was, even he was being projected at five a lot, was I think pretty uh, shocking for me. I like Scotty. He's he is one of the most uh, electric personalities in the draft. Just like just an entertaining guy, I can tell why he like won teams over in interviews and stuff. Um, plays his ass off. Is a big body. I think Toronto could use him as like a as as a five that can switch over everything and, and be enough of a shot blocker. Maybe I find it a little weird that they drafted him that high when they recently signed OG Ananobi to a contract because they are somewhat similar players. Um, Ananobi, I would say is probably better on defending guards and, and, and uh, Scotty is probably better a little bit. Pro- Scotty's probably like two through five and Ananobi is probably like one through four as far as defenses, defensive uh, versatility goes. Um, and Nobi has worked himself into being a better shooter. It just seems like a weird fit to those things. And obviously combined with the ter- Toronto trade rumors with Simmons and there being like, you know, there was, there was the report that they, that Daryl asked for everyone on their team and everyone in the city of Toronto. Um, but the, I think the report was Van Vliet Ananobi, and four. Like, yeah. Four and, first round picks and a number. Well, I don't four, know, yeah. Number the pick the num- number four and I think a couple other picks which is obviously oh, no I think it was Lowry lot. too I thought it was it like Lowry which is very very bizarre maybe it wasn't Van Vliet it couldn't have been Lowry and Van Vliet that's no it I was heard. it was Lowry Van Vliet Ananobi and four that's very wild but you know I like that Daryl's <laughs> asking for everything keep asking why not we got time we can keep asking for whoever it is um, but I that that pick to me looked like you are not committed to Ananobi because I mean, maybe, maybe I'm reading into it too much or wanting to be reading into it too much. Cause I would love Ananobi on the Sixers. I've loved him for forever. You've obviously been a huge Og fan since you've heard about him. Well, um, I have. But I, 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 that'll be very cool. So I'm, I'm hoping that that, that is a possibility that it ends up being some combination of a Lowry Ananobi or Van Vliet Ananobi uh, coming here in a situation. But he's also the, the other, the flip side of that is Scotty Barnes is not like a perfect fit with Simmons. He played point guard. He played some point guard at FSU and like isn't an excellent shooter and doesn't have a ton of 
moves with the ball in his hands from the perimeter. So I, I don't know that those guys fit either. So it might just be they think of him as a, as a center and a switchable, like, short roll guy. Um, but an interesting pick for sure because everyone had Jalen Suggs there. And I was excited about Jalen Suggs there. Even if Lowry left, Van Vliet Suggs is a really, really cool one too. And I guess if they trade Van Vliet, then Lowry Suggs would have been a cool one too. But yeah, um, I, my, my guess. My guess is Ujiri looks at Toronto and says, like, I not that they're completely starting over, but I, I, I think like he's erasing the whiteboard on what they are and that's thinking, what I think too. Thinking pretty open on yeah. what they could be. And maybe, maybe he's not like, I'm definitely keeping this guy or definitely keeping that guy, but he's thinking more, ah, I'll keep one of them, you know? And and it, if a great deal for a current star comes around, we'll go that way. And if a great deal for a young player comes around, we'll go that way. So I think that's probably my my guess on Toronto. Yeah. But I think like if you look at before we get into the rest of the draft, just like looking at the Sixers draft as a whole, like defense again, prioritizing defense in, in all four guys they've gotten, except for all three of the four guys they've gotten so far, Petrashev. Um and more versatility in in uh Springer and Henry than than they've had on on the team of guys that are like ah you can't play him on this end or he's weak on this end it's just like a little bit more like can do a bunch of stuff guys rather than oh they're exposable on on this side or that side right um well before we get to the other draft and then the Westbrook trade and then the Simmons rumors we'll tell you about our presenting sponsor that is DraftKings Sportsbook man we love them we love them let me tell you about free pools. You're like DraftKings Sportsbook, that's where I bet. Yeah, it's where you bet, but you, all co- you also can play for free. We have those games in Tokyo going on right now. You know, the games in Tokyo. And every day they have free pools and a free shot at $5,000 in total cash prizes. That's $5,000 up for grabs. And like I said, it's free. You're like, but I, I bet. I, yes, you can bet there, but also play for free. Easy to enter. Just download the DraftKings app. And right on the front, like I have my phone here, I was looking at it just so I could make sure before we got going where it was. It was right on the front, the very first thing, right in the middle, says free, says pools, go to free pools, and there's free contests all over there. What's a free pool? Well, you just answer questions. What do you think is going to happen in this game? What do you think is going to happen in that game? And the people that finish at the top, they win stuff. Very easy. Safe, secure, reliable, based here in the U.S., so you deposit your money goes right into DraftKings Sportsbook like in seconds. You withdraw whenever you want. You get your money almost right away. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code RTRS. When you sign up, get your free shot at up to $5,000 in total cash prizes every day of the gold medal games. Again, that is the DraftKings pools page to get your shot at huge cash prizes. That's promo code RTRS for a limited time. Only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details so that leaves Suggs Suggs go to five with Orlando and that seems like a like a win for them like I you know I he, he yeah just, value wise I know they're such an interesting team man such a just so many a collection of young guys with so, so much overlapping skills and weaknesses you know Cole Anthony Markel Fultz now Suggs and then also like RJ Hampton who they they traded for during the season and and Chuma and John Isaac and they got um Franz Wagner uh and they also have Wendell Carter and Mobamba it's just like a bunch of weird interesting things and I and they're rebuilding and they're figuring out what works but um super interesting I think they're happy with Jalen Suggs definitely Jalen Suggs is like such a winning player and I think that's as far as like a two-way guy who's also a winning player like He's not going to be the best player on any team um, that's contending, but um, I think that's a that's a him and starting from a place of like one of one of Cole Anthony or Markel Fultz becoming a good player, maybe um, Suggs is going to be good for sure. John Isaac, if he stays healthy, is going to be really good. Chuma is a stretch guy. I like Wendell Carter. Like, there's a bunch of pieces there. I, I have no idea what it's going to become, but I, I thought they had a they had a really good top of the draft for sure. Josh Giddy is a very Oklahoma City Thunder pick right now. I thought, mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I thought like the Mitchell pick for the Kings was like sort of interesting, uh, given, I mean, what I know about him and then what I know about, um, uh, what's his face, the point guard, um, Darren Fox. Darren Fox. Like it, it doesn't seem like they would be a, 
play together, right? Because Mitchell's kind of small and Fox is kind of small. Like there have been Fox rumors. I don't know. Did yeah? Did that I, I was going through this draft, reading, you know, narcissistically thinking everything was about us as the Sixers, as the right. team, being like, okay, well, they did this. That means it's De'Aaron Fox coming to Philadelphia. Um, I think that I think that the the thing that's been prioritized. And you've been talking about this for a long time as regards to the Sixers, but like I think it's been prioritized going back from like Lowry and Van Vliet uh, a couple years ago succeeding to Trey Young being so successful um, and and Booker and Paul, um, although my, Milwaukee was a little bit different. Like it's just guys being like you need a bunch of guys that can do things with the ball and that can handle the ball that can get plays with the ball. It is less important to have like traditional like this guy's the point guard this guy is the two guard you just, like you need guys that can make plays on the ball and get places with the ball in their hands and if you don't have enough of them sixers didn't then you're gonna you're gonna have a tough time succeeding and so i think i think that because fox and davion mitchell are both good players who play their asses off um i think they could play together they could find a way um and i think that tyrese halliburton is big enough and smart enough to to be able to be the to roll three guard lineups out there together. Well, um, and, and just to interrupt for, I mean, the team that beat us in the playoffs this year, we're playing uh, Lou Williams and, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, Trey Young, at Trey Young time. at the same time for know? sure. So, I mean, Davion's just a really, he's a, he's going to work his ass off. He's going to be a good kid. Um, I think that there were better options for them there, but it's going to, it's at least hitting a single there because he's, he's going to play his ass off. And, and between him and Tyrese Halliburton, who are another guy who's just a winner, they're going to start winning games just because they have guys who who give a shit. I thought too, I, even though I just learned who he was last week, I decided I really, really like. I think what did I have him too on my big board? Chris Duarte, like going thirteen, seemed like a, a pretty huge leap for him, given where he looked like he was going a couple weeks ago compared to this one. You know, you mean like, you mean that that's low for him or high for him? No, high, high. It seems high. Yeah, right. I, I that's mean, the like, way I, yeah. yeah. The Warriors were definitely going to take him at 14, 100%. Okay. Um, I'm surprised they got most Warriors had a great draft. I mean, Kuminga, who knows? I think they're going to probably just try to say, like, whatever other guy we get between Kuminga and Wiseman, like, we're just going to package them together. I doubt Kuminga yeah. plays maybe even a minute for them, but Moody's a great pick for them at 14. I loved him. I had him fifth on my board. He should start for them right away. Like, he should be the the, the small forward for them immediately. He's just, he played on a, a, a stacked Monverde team. Um, where he just basically had to be a catch and shoot guy and, and defend his position, and, and he also has some secondary ball handling. He's going to be like so good for that team. It's it's very unfair that Steph and Clay, if Clay's healthy, um, got him as well. Um, but yeah, Indiana, Indiana had a weird had a weird draft. Um, I have to still like put, process all my thoughts together when I see like who actually got everybody and who left. But trading Aaron Holiday, who I guess they just didn't value as much as um, TJ and Edmund Sumner is interesting um they only moved up like a couple spots well, remember tj's a free agent TJ's i think free agent. I, I think that means they're going to resign him i think that i don't think they would trade a backup point guard um without thinking that they're they're going to resign the guy that they like that'd be my guess um but duarte is really good and i think he's going to help that team they're an interesting team they have like s- just several guys between like brogdon and lavert and jeremy lamb and uh tj warren and uh i said lavert and now Duarte, like just like so many guys from like six four to six eight who can just do a bunch of stuff. And then not to mention Miles Turner and, and Demata Sabonis. If they if they end up becoming like a better coached team, that's really there's a lot of interesting length there. And I'd be interested to see if they can if they can like, you know, 2015 hawks their way into being good enough and and then who knows. Um otherwise I thought I, other guys, other teams that I thought had a great draft. I thought Houston had a great draft. Um, Jalen Green at two was really cool, and that's a guy that they can build around. And then also trading up to get uh, Alperin Shangun, and who is not good defensively, but a really really special passer and shooter. And they want to turn him into the next, you know, type of Demata Sabonis or Jokic type of uh, overseas big man. But then pairing him with Usman Gar- Usman Garoba uh, from Spain is who's the best defensive big man in the draft and most switchable and play also as a high motor plays his ass off. It's a fun pairing there. Then they also swing and get Josh Christopher, who could be somebody um, just a good draft there. And I thought Charlotte had an awesome draft. I was really impressed with Charlotte. Um, Kai Jones is 
really good and super talented and, and the kind of guy you'd want to pair with Lamelo as a pick and roll big who can do do stuff on both ends. Uh, fast as hell as a big man. He used to be a track athlete and then only started playing basketball at 15 and now he's a first round pick uh, from the Bahamas. And I'm not a huge uh, James Booknight fan. I like him generally during the season. I thought he was a little bit higher, but he felt he slipped a little bit. And uh, and then getting him there, I think, is a good fit. And I think I think the Hornets should, depending on what happens with their, you know, free agents or whatever. But like Lamelo, Book Knight, Hayward, Miles Bridges, PJ Washington. They traded for Plumley, who's going to be fine. And then Kai Jones. Like I think that's I think that they're they they're going to make some signings. But I think that might be a they're definitely a playing team next year. Maybe better. So the the night starts off with, and this this will sort of lead into the Sixer stuff. The the night starts off with uh, the rumors about, and this has been going on for a couple of days about Westbrook going to the Lakers. I I know this will sound like I'm just I always do this stuff with LeBron and be takey, but like my reaction when they were trading for Westbrook is like, what a sad way for the end of LeBron's career to like happen that they're just going, you know how we're going to fix it. We're going to get this fucking lunatic who was, was, was really good at one point, but now is just sort of a parody of himself. And we're going to make, make him play point guard for the Lakers. And that is what like, there's no chance of them winning a championship with that guy playing point guard. I, I don't think I, I think it's going to be, like that has true disaster potential. Like I think LeBron will get furious playing with Westbrook, won't he? I mean, it just seems like it's such a strange trade to me. I guess they had really limited things that they could do, um, but it just seems like they. I mean, another team with Russell Westbrook gets left off the hook and get something for him. They get a first round pick and Kuzma and what and, and uh, KCP. Is that was that the whole trade? Kuzma, KCP. Um, and Montrez and the first round pick. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I just don't, I guess the the Lakers had really few options, but I, I don't really see that working out all that well. Yeah. I'm kind of a centrist about this trade. I don't think that they traded anything great. Um, KCP was super helpful for them, but I think there's like scrap heap guys that they can get in, in that area. Um, Kuzma was occasionally good, but then sort of fell off. Trez didn't want to be there and and also was kind of unplayable a little bit. Um, there's always the possibility it's the idea that, of putting Westbrook on the team. It's not what no, they trade. No, of course. I, I think yeah. that I think that West I think that putting Westbrook on this team could potentially because I didn't think they were getting anybody else. They certainly weren't getting anybody super valuable, right? I I think DeRozan was probably your best bet um, right. of of guy that they could acquire. Um, I don't think they were going to get Lowry. I certainly don't think they were going to get Chris Paul. Like they just didn't have the money or prospects to get a player like that. And so I think Westbrook compared to other things. And, and I think, I do think he's probably, I think Schroeder kind of sucks for them. I'm not a Schroeder guy, although he had a good year that one year with OKC. Um, I think that Westbrook raises their ceiling, but I also think he significantly lowers their floor. Like I think there's, there's a chance of it going really, really bad. And there's a chance that like sometimes when guys play with LeBron and Anthony Davis, they play better. Sometimes they choose to play better. Like Russell Westbrook was horrendous on defense uh, with the, for the Wizards and, and I think also mostly for the Rockets, but he's played defense well in his career. And so if he looks, if he does the like look in the mirror and like, okay, I'm on a real team, I'm on a championship contender, I, ha I have to play defense now. I'm, I'm not going to fall asleep off ball. Then maybe he does. And I think there's those kinds of good players can choose to turn it on or not during a season. The other thing, I've, I, there, I've read, like, there's so many tweets today, I forget who, who said it, but. Westbrook is a good regular season player. In the playoffs, struggles a lot and and put throws a wrench into things, and they're going to have spacing issues and all that stuff. But the the value of allowing Westbrook to and, and AD to win you some regular season games while LeBron saves his energy, I do think that there's value in that, and I think that he he will just like provide a kick in the ass to a Lakers team that occasionally, at least this season, like needed a bunch of kicks in the ass. Like they were, they struggled all season long. So they still got a lot, a lot of work to do getting a bunch of shooting. They, they just signed a couple of good undrafted free agents. Uh, Austin Reeves is going to help them. I think he'll be in the rotation as a two way. Joel Ayayi is fine. Um, he's also, he'll be an NBA rotation player for his career as like a 11th or 12th guy at some point. Um, so they have work to do, but 
I think it could go pretty good. I think it could absolutely go really, really bad because um, we've seen how bad Westbrook can be. But he's yeah. also like he also can be good. So we'll see. We'll see how if he levels up his game with LeBron. All right. So we'll talk about how this uh, affects the Sixers right after. I, if you're watching on YouTube, look behind me. See that big bed? I'm in a hotel. It's not my bed. It's a big bed. You deserve to get your dog. Nice big fucking bed. Nice, comfortable, supportive bed. Said it once, said a million times. You don't adopt a dog to not spoil it. Spoil it. Make sure your dog's healthy. Big barker, therapeutic dog beds. We got one this week. <laughs> the dog's name was Samwell. I just thought it was fucking hilarious. Uh, Samwell is now a process pup. Samwell's mom accidentally threw out the process pup patches, but Samwell's dad wrote to Big Barker. They sent him two new process pup patches. You go to bigbarker.com slash Ricky. That's where you get the Big Barker therapeutic dog bed that has been proven by PenVet to improve your dog's life, improve your dog's health. Joint pain goes down. Joint function goes up. Quality of life goes up. All that shit is true, and it happens. Bigbarker.com slash Ricky. Then you send us a picture like they did with Samwell, and we put them in the process pup gallery. There's a 10-year warranty on this thing. So you're like 200 bucks. How am I spending 200 bucks on a dog bed? Well, cause you, you're, it's going to be a decade before you have to buy another one. And like I said, reduces wear and tear on younger dogs and increases mobility levels and energy in older dogs. Your dog is worth it. Your dog deserves it. Treat your dog right. A one year at home trial. Uh, if you don't like it, they'll give you full refund. They'll even pay for the shipping handmade in the USA. Big Barker dog beds. <laughs> So the original thought was when Westbrook got traded, everyone was like, oh, they're tearing it down in Washington. But then it came out, maybe Bradley Beal didn't love playing with Russell Westbrook. And now, <laughs> I, 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 shocking, I know. But now it seems like Beal, I, I, I don't even remember who reported it, but like that Beal is happy now in D.C. And I don't think that's surprising. Like, you know, I mentioned to Sharp one time, uh, recently, I said, you know, I have this theory about Beal and Lillard is that deep down, they're both pretty happy. They like the city that they live. They're sort of like a hero in the city that they live. They get to score 30 points a game. They make tons and tons of money. And they know they should want to win and they probably do want to win. But like they would probably be fine staying where they were. And I, I definitely get that sense with Beal. And it doesn't seem to me like and maybe he'll be on the table to be traded, but I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't bet on it. Like I, if I had a bet, I would bet on Beal being on the wizards this year. Like that's the, the Westbrook trade to me, I think means that Beal will be on the wizards or I, I, I don't think it is. I don't think it excludes Beal being on the wizards. I guess I would say. Yeah, maybe I was, I was certainly hoping that that, that meant that they were tearing it down. I think that the haul that they got for Westbrook w is not super inspiring. It seems like they just constantly have fours who can't really shoot that well on their yeah. team. Just like all the time, just a re over and over again, just numerous fours. Um, they spent a high pick on Danny Avdia last year, who is a four who can't shoot that well. Maybe this allows him to have the ball in his hands more. Rui Hachimura was a was a better player than I than I thought he'd be, and and, and plays hard and is is improving. He looks pretty um, good sometimes. Hachimura. He looks pretty good sometimes. I don't I yeah. don't believe he he really really wants to. He's got the Tobias like he would really prefer to take nineteen footers, uh, type of jumper. Um, but he's good. He's he's, a, he's an NBA player for sure. Um, I Beal should want to leave. He should want to leave. He should be unhappy. He should be ready to move on. He is. Still young because he, but he's been playing in Washington for a long time, and so it should be time for him to move on. But um, he doesn't. It seems like I think they're going to say that like we plan on keeping him. We want to keep him. We want to build around him until they don't. So maybe maybe Beal it's the kind of thing where he wants to go into this season and see. Um, yeah, he can opt out after this year. I mean, if they're if they're going to trade him, they got to trade him like now yeah I guess, for sure you know? so it could be a it could be a during the season type of thing so yeah i, I don't, don't know. know i don't know i i 
I don't believe any of the reports. Like there was a report saying like him and KCP are actually really close friends. I'm like, who gives a shit? He can find friends yeah. anywhere. We got right. so many friends. Right. Got friends for yeah. days. He doesn't have friends in Philadelphia. What are we talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I that's less of a thing for me. I think it's I I. I was hoping that this trade made it more likely that he would be traded, but it turns out I, I think what it doesn't make a difference. I think there yeah. it is an even amount of will he be traded before or after the Westbrook trade, um, because they're not going to be good this year. They're not. They're not going to be good. They're going to win, you know, thirty-two games, um, and maybe make the play-in in the East. Who knows? But he should want to go, and eventually, I think. Well, here's the thing that I will say. Westbrook not being on the team anymore means that they sh- they can talk themselves into Simmons. You couldn't talk yourself into Simmons and Westbrook together. But now that Westbrook's out, then you could talk yourself into like, all right, we'll rebuild. We have this guy team controlled for a long time. Maybe Beal says, hey, I'm not going to sign here, trade me, so that they stay for, you know, they get four extra years out of it. They get another power forward who can't shoot. That's something that they like. Um can so I think there's a possibility there, but uh, I can talk myself into anything. So whatever. It's Simmons with Kuzma and KCP. It's like the shitty Lakers. It's mm-hmm. like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess you could talk to yourself. I hope, I hope so too. So that the Simmons stuff has gotten intense in that the rumors are such now, like it does feel like it's no turning back now. And I, I thought it was there, but it definitely seems there. There, there's the report that you know that Rich Paul and Ben Simmons are like, you know, thrilled and helping out or whatever. And then that Daryl, Daryl talked to the Cavs and asked for every significant young player they have plus four draft picks. You mentioned the Raptors offer earlier, and then there was a Warriors one where it was like four firsts, three swaps, and Wiseman or something like that. And so. Right. And Wiggins. So, so my, yeah, for salary, you got to do Wiggins. So my, my thought is going into this. Unfortunately, when I saw those, I was like, oh, this is like the long-term value setting portion of the Simmons, Simmons, like that he's trying to repair value now with these sorts of things. And there's no way this trade is happening on draft night. So this will go on for a while, obviously. Um, I, I think, think there's a still... I think there was still a chance that the trade happened tonight. I think I I am so far, as far as things that Daryl can do starting from the end of the season to now, very happy. I think that there's no reason for there's the only leaks are the leaks about the Sixers are asking for a fuckload of shit, um, which is good. You'd rather that than the Sixers are happy with the Allen Iverson trade package from a, from you know oh six or whatever it was. Um, that sucks. We don't want that. We want to trade. We want to get, he should be asking for everything. He should be asking for the Harden trade. He should be asking for the Drew Holiday trade. Like, let's find a way to, to make that work. And, uh, and if it gets closer to the season, then maybe you get worried about it. But the draft is one inflection point of when it could have happened. I think I'm sure some teams have talked themselves into the idea that they're going to get all these free agents. Yep. And then that's going to be huge. Um, but a lot of them won't. A lot of them will not end up with the free agents they think they're going to end up with. Um, and they'll have to sign some, you know, plan B, C, or D. Uh, but then it's a question of like, okay, if we sign those guys, then we can't trade them until like, you know, usually it's like December 15th or something like that. Then that becomes dicey. It, the offseason speeds up awful quickly after free agency. People are starting to like really look at the teams. But if if somebody strikes out in free agency, I think it's, I think it's certainly possible. It seems like he's engaging teams on, on a bunch of different fronts. You know, Cleveland, Sacramento, San Antonio is interesting. Toronto, maybe Golden State. Although I really didn't like that Golden State package. That Golden State package was just like, we'll take your bunch of stuff and then try to trade it to other people for yeah. a bunch of stuff. Like it was never. That's not like anyone I'm interested in at any point. Um, but I'm 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 fine with it. I think I if I was doing the negotiations, I'd be worried about feeling like I'm bluffing, being like, we can wait as long as we fucking want, man. I'll wait. I'll yeah. wait forever. I'd be like, I don't want to wait. I want to do it. I would like to do it now, please. Like that would be yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah. my panic level concern. But I think I, I trust Dial to, to, to handle it well and better than I would. Um, and there's no reason right now to, to settle for any lesser offer. No reason at all. So then, yeah, right now, like, I, you know, he, he knows he's got to do it. Everybody else knows he's got to do it. He might as well, 
you know, go through these motions as best he can. He's, uh, I trust him as much as I would trust anyone to do it. The final thing I have is just a shout out to Landry Shamit, who is now in Phoenix with Dario and Bridges and, uh, you know, like, it, and, I, I and would Monty say, Williams. Yeah. Who and Monty Williams. Williams like, just, you know, the Suns, one of our, our teams out there. And it's nice to see Shamit on there. I'm sure he'll do. I'm sure he'll do great out there. I thought it was a weird yeah. trade. Right. Um, but, but, uh, but yeah, I, I wish, wish Landry Shamit the best. Glad he's Pretty good. bizarre. The, yeah. The Ricky Rubio trade also kind of bizarre. Yeah. Um, wonder if that means that the Cavs are going to try to trade Sexton. Uh, I can't remember if I said this on the podcast or I've just been flooding Sixers Adams text messages with it, but I've become borderline obsessed with getting Larry Nance as the backup center. It is, uh, it is yeah. becoming you my, my like pet thing. I think he would be perfect. I would really like him very much. Um, if there's like a, if this honestly, like, George Hill for Larry Nance seems to work really nicely. Um, and I would be happy with that. Uh, if they, if they want more veteran situations and if the Sixers, especially if the Sixers re-sign Danny, then I'd be, we don't need Danny and George Hill. Like that's, a, that's this is funny. the most, that's like the most pre-processed sentence you've ever said. Um, <laughs> why not? Why not? We, this is that we're tinkering. Tinkering is important. <laughs> we tinkered a little bit better last year. We wouldn't have lost the Hawks in the fucking second round. So yeah. there's guys I'm excited about. Um, are you trying to go to bed? Should I do my wrap up? Oh, uh, can I, yeah, I, I really got to go to bed, man. I yeah, got up at just three. the final yeah. wrap up. I feel, okay. I feel yeah. really good about the, I feel yeah. really good about yeah. the draft. I think, yeah, you know, Daryl has, you know, gotten a reputation rightfully so for doing a lot of wheeling and dealing, but in two straight years, he pretty much stayed put and drafted for value at, at, at the spots that he was targeted at. Um, I really like Jaden Springer. I think he's a guy that teams, if they end up doing a big Ben trade and they try to go after Dame or whatever, He's a guy that can play with Ben or also could play alongside Maxi here if they if they trade Ben for a smaller situation. Um, I just really like the way that, you know, you see a lot of these teams that try to win a championship now. They so quickly, and I think Houston did this, so quickly run out of assets. And the Sixers are kind of loaded with them. Like if if you're they they are a young, as far as like good, somewhat, you know, top eight teams in the league, whatever, as far as like young players they have a bunch of intriguing young players that you could pile them together and convince another team like you're getting a haul in this way and we and we can you know we can get more veterans in there and the, or those guys can develop the way maxi developed last year and hopefully will continue i just think it's a really nice draft both of those both of the big men are guys that i had as potential stretch fives that i wanted to target the fact that he got two and one is a stash is cool um and aaron henry is a guy who's one of the best wing defenders in in college basketball last year and if he can work on a shot then he's then he's extremely playable, um, and it's good. And we didn't we didn't make any bad trades yet, so I'm excited. I'm happy <laughs> that they got. I'm happy that they got a bunch of guys that I like. Jaden Springer um, is, is going to be cool. I would love to see him and Maxi play together at some point. Would be a fun summer league tandem if Maxi plays summer league. Um, he should. He certainly could. He seems like he's a guy that would want to play. Yeah. Um, I I could see the argument that he'd be like, ah, you're too good. Don't risk getting you know sick or something by being around so many people but um they're around people anyway so who knows uh i'm happy i'm happy it's a good night i'm pleased the sixers they have killed me and resuscitated me more times than i des than they deserve or that i should have let them but we're feeling okay we're feeling okay we're feeling okay <laughs> we'll talk to you this weekend are you down with ttp yeah you no Lick face. <laughs>